So what most interested me about the test is the reference from Frozen, this uh, swirls. I felt like that was really cool. I haven't done anything like that and uh, wanted to try to just see what that would be like. And I guess we got an F. Okay, no. All right. So I wanted to do something that was procedural that would... Um, I know it's supposed to be from top angle, or we talked about top angle, but I kind of just enjoyed doing it so much that I wanted it to work from all angles. And uh, I actually worked it to the point where I was like, I'm pretty happy with it. It uh, feels like I feel like I'm I'm the girl from from Frozen. I'm like, let it go, just casting all my wonderful magic. So uh, let's talk a little bit. I mean, I just started doing some like ice transitions. Not too happy with the. Uh, this is like another just that's just some ice development. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the the swirls. Like I really enjoy doing that, and uh, it's pretty functional. So like it actually changes if you shoot close by. It doesn't. Um, it changes the spline, so it's all spline based. Um, I make uh, a spline with a number of points based on distance, and then I offset those points. And then over the course of that, um, basically when the initial particle leads, uh, as it hits certain points, it'll spin off other splines that have uh, art directed uh, curves. So you get some. The only the only kind of cheat that's happening right now is the um, they sparkle extra because there's temporal uh, anti-aliasing. If so, it's not really that's not really a solution for uh, the sparkles. Like it should. It's like oh, the snow sparkles so much. You can't really sparkle because of that. That's not that's cheating. But uh, otherwise, I mean, I could totally make a different material for them. But let's talk about what what I'm doing here. So I think it's uh, let's talk. So I I made my own vector fields, and basically it is. So the mainline particle is pretty simple. You have um, a ribbon that will be the glow, and then these particles, which is the main body that are um, that are unlit. When then you have a few that for the highlights that is uh, that has an, an emissive uh, material, and that's that's pretty much the gist of it. The trick is that the ribbon is a just a glowing trail that will hide. Um, it's a glowing trail that'll basically go over top to give the the because uh, the glow is pretty hard to 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 achieve. So I basically cheat it with that. And um, the more fun is the blueprint of the spline magic. Uh, that's not it. That's the spline magic maker. So basically, we we set an array, and let's take a look at at this since this kind of explains a little bit. Um, so when the ray hits it will always have the end of the spline will always be the hit point so you'll see the spline goes there when the ray doesn't hit anything it actually has like a wild end. the last point will still be random um, just to sort of make it feel like uh, it's kind of got that uh, you know it'll, so the last point will always hit the target or it'll fly off in a wild point um, so that what I what I wanted out of this is I wanted every time you cast the magic it's different and the swirls feel natural and that it should surprise me I should look at it and just be like I want to keep looking at it um, that's kinda of the goal of how I'd always want to work is that I'm surprised by it so what we're doing really quickly this is just checking how long is the ray and make the number of points we cast a ray 
based on the hit reaction, uh, based on does it hit or not. We um, that was when I was testing against a mannequin uh, a character. So then what we do is we just fire, we make the main spline. I think it's funny when you write anything in blueprints, it's, it ends up looking quite elaborate because of your thought process. Um, uh, but ultimately, uh, so right, it makes a spline, it's using um, just a random vector multiplied to offset it. And, and I could even, we could art drag this in a lot of different ways. Like it could, it could overlap so you get swirls that come forward and backward. Um, but what I'd really want to spend more time on is making sure that the subsplines, which where are the subs subsplines, like to make sure that their angle off of that is a little bit smarter. Like I'm getting the path rotation, but I'd really think that that could even be more natural to feel like the curves are even better um, than the current method I'm using. But I think it's working well enough. There's no hit reaction effect. There's only a spawn effect right now. Because um, what I'm not liking, uh, well, first, let's just so basically, um, yeah, I think that's enough of explaining that. And the statue that turns to ice is pretty simple, too. I mean, it's just dynamic material. Tell the material where the sphere is. The sphere mask radiates out both two swap materials. Because the hard part in that is that you want to go to a translucent material, so you can't use a layered material. It has to be two different objects if you want to go from opaque to translucent. So um, it's not. I don't. I feel like that solution is really it doesn't please me. But it's. It all depends if I can go with actually, or can I make ice that's opaque that actually has a sense of depth based on subsurface scattering? I don't know still doing ice development but uh, just wanted to give a kind of a sense of where I'm at right now let's see what else did I uh, sort of let's see we have um, yeah so basically there's no hit reaction because I think in frozen you have um, you have each shot is art directed so you can have like you get to have like really elegant like start uh, start magic Pfft, cut to beautiful spline magic when you have to put them all together I've, I put a, uh, a hit effect in and it just starts getting like especially from this angle but luckily we're not really we're mostly looking at this angle but even still there's also a bug in the ribbon effect so sometimes you'll see a ribbon kind of going off crazy but overall Overall, it's so anyhow. Uh, yeah, I think the art direction would be more specific based on exactly the camera angle, and then each curve would be really art directed for that camera angle. And that's that would probably be the next phase of of something interesting. Actually, one of the neat things is that with this technique, at least you it always um, you can even hit higher up and. Uh, the effect works so it's kind of neat um, anyway that's just sort of the short of where I'm at and uh, that's what I'm doing